Okay, so today we're going to be talking about adverbs and different uses for the infinitive. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, we're on page 78. The following, let's just read along first. The following adverbs are often used to modify an adjective or another adverb. Remember that the ending of an adverb does not change like that of an adjective. So uh, let's remember, what do adverbs do? Well, let's back up. What do adjectives do? What do adjectives do? They modify what? Nouns, right. And what do adverbs do? They modify what? Verbs, they can. Yes, what else do they modify? Do they modify nouns? No, they modify the adjectives that modify the nouns, right? So if we're talking about an adjective, it's going to make, it's going to describe something in a certain way. So there's a door, blue is the kind of door it is. It's describing what the door is like. It's a blue door. So it's an adjective because it describes a thing, a noun. Adverbs describe the extent to which something is whatever it is. So that could be an action, it could be an adjective that's describing a noun, it could also be an adverb, like it says here. So adverbs describe verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Uh, and they describe the extent that something is whatever it is. So for example, if we were to say the door is blue, blue is an adjective. But if we want to describe to what extent the door is blue, as in it is very blue, then we would say the door is very blue. And very is an adverb because it's describing the extent to which the adjective, the color blue, is the door. Uh, it also describes the extent to something is an action. So uh, if we want to say Jackson runs. So yesterday I came back from the bus. There he was with the rest of the group running. If I want to describe the extent to which Jackson runs, I can say Jackson runs quickly. Now we're not only describing that he does run, but the extent that he runs, like what, in whatever manner, whether it's he runs um, quickly, he runs um, funny, he runs whatever, right? However he runs, however you're going to describe the way that he runs, the description that describes the extent to which he does what he's doing is an adverb. And then if you want to say that he described the extent to which the adverb is doing something, then you're going to use an adverb to describe the adverb. So in that example, Jackson runs, we add an adverb, Jackson runs quickly. But if we want to describe the extent to which he runs quickly, we could say Jackson runs what kind of quickly? Very quickly. Jackson runs very quickly. So in that case, very is not an adverb describing the action. It's actually describing the adverb quickly, which describes the action. So adverbs can describe what three things? What three things? Verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Excellent. So now that we look at this, um, we have to remember something about nouns and adjectives. So nouns and adjectives all have gender, right? Technically, nouns have gender, and the adjectives change their words to match the gender and number of the noun. So, for example, if we want to say the door, door is the noun, and noun, the word for door, is feminine singular, la puerta. So it's feminine and it's singular, a door, not doors. So la puerta. Uh, if we want to say the door is red, we would say la puerta, and then the word for red is rojo, but rojo is masculine. We got to change it to feminine, right? So this is not new. This is review for everyone. Um, however, adverbs do not do that. Adverbs do not change gender and number like adjectives do, and it's because adverbs are not describing nouns, which have gender. So. Uh, let's look at this, this, these examples now. El precio de los tenis es demasiado alto. El precio 
de los tenis es demasiado alto. So, demasiado means too. It means like too as in also or too much. It's an adverb in that sense. So, it is uh, too tall. It's very tall to the point where it's too much. Um, does des demasiado mean tall? In that example, el precio de los tenis es demasiado alto. Let's look at this. What does the sentence mean? Anybody have a guess? What does el precio mean? It's a a um, uh, a similar word as a word in English. Well, el means the, right? So the what? El precio. Price. Thank you. The price of the de los what? Price of the what? Shoes. Right. Price of the shoes is, es, demasiado alto. So des, demasiado means to, and alto means too high. Too, right. So in this case, alto doesn't mean tall, it means high. Um, and demasiado, is demasiado describing the price? Not exactly. Remember, adverbs don't describe things, and price is a person, place, pet, thing, or idea, right? A price is an idea. So it's a noun, and adverbs don't describe nouns. They describe what? Adjectives, adverbs, or verbs. So. What word in this sentence, which Spanish word is demasiado describing? Alto, Alto exactly, because it's describing what kind of high the price is. The price is high, what kind of high? Too high. Okay, so the next one. Los precios, sorry, los precios suben muy rápido en esta tienda. Suben. Los precios suben. Anybody know what suben means? Look it up. Go ahead and look it up. So the price is something. It's a verb, suben, they, right? It's ER verb, and it's the third person plural, EN, N, like comen, they eat. So the price is something muy rápido en esta tienda. Very quickly, rápido. Huh? They go up. Is that what you said? Is that what you said, Jackson? They rise, they go up? Uh, I didn't say that, but yeah, that's what it meant. Okay. <laughs> so, los precios. Somebody tell me, is los precios masculine or feminine? Masculine. Good. And is it singular or plural? Mm-hmm. Plural. Okay, so the subject, los precios, the noun, is plural. So, the verb is plural, suben. And then it says, muy rápido, very quickly. Obviously, the word muy isn't going to change because it's an adverb, and adverbs don't change gender or number, so that's obvious. But rápido, why is rápido not plural, like los precios? Is it a typo? Yes, it's an adverb, which means it's describing what? What word is it describing? It, it can't be describing los precios, because it would be an adjective. Huh? Is it describing the verb? Exactly. So, you're right. It's describing the verb, which is suben. So, the prices do what? They rise quickly. So, quickly is describing the rising of the prices. It's not describing the prices. So, which makes it an adverb, which means you don't match rápido with the gender and number of los precios. So, los precios suben muy rápido en esta tienda, in this shop. Okay, so the, the rest of these, these um, this vocabulary would be bastante, which means quite, uh, or like quite well, 
pretty well. Algo means somewhat. Algo as an adverb means somewhat, but it also can function as a noun, something, algo. So uh, if you tell somebody, hey, uh, va a comprar uh, algo, go buy something in la tienda, in the store, like in the campus store, go buy something. You can say, go buy algo, something. But in this case, algo is referring to what? El precio de esta mochila, so the price of this what? Mochila. ¿Qué significa mochila? Backpack, right? So the price of this backpack is algo caro. So somewhat, huh? Small, is that what you said? Did you say small? It's a good guess. Somewhat caro. Expensive, right. So, um, <laughs> so algo means somewhat when it's describing an adjective, which is expensive. Okay, so that's adverbs. Uh, notice also sometimes if it's uh, negative, like not something, you it's no. And then nada, no es nada. It is not at all econom uh, econ economical. I'm not sure that's a word. <laughs> all right, uh, let's come back to the uh, activities after we um, talk about the uses for the infinitive. Um, go ahead and take a moment uh, to read through page 80 on your own. Um, try to understand it, and then we'll go to the board with it, okay? So let's talk about the four different uses for the infinitive. Oh, shoot. Uh, we're already familiar with, uh, with one of them. When, when have we most often seen an infinitive of a verb? When do we most often see infinitives? When we what? Learn a new verb, right? So, um, so we most often see it when we learn a new verb. Like, uh, if we see it and we're like, well, what does, what does, um, You see this word and you're like, I don't know what that means. I can figure out that it's a verb, but I don't know what verb it means or, or what it is. Uh, so you look it up and you find out, oh, it's the second person. You look it up in a dictionary or something or online. Uh, second person singular past tense form of, anybody know what verb it comes from? Any guess? Of decir, which means to say, to say. So that would mean that this means you said. So second person singular, you, past tense form of decir, to say, so you said. So we see the infinitive when, we've, when we learn new verbs, when we find forms of verbs that are new to us at least. Um, but we also see infinitives in other sentences besides, and like actually in the sentence. So uh, this isn't really being used as a sentence. We'll we would never say, yo, I decir uh, something, I say, like that doesn't make sense. So we don't often, or as, as often, see the infinitive in a sentence. But when is an example of something that we have used an infinitive in the sentence? Anybody have any, anybody remember any time that we've done that? What about, um, I want ir al baño. 
I want to go, right? Quiero ir, to go. So there's an infinitive. Um, today we're going to look at four different times that we use infinitives. So here's one. Uh, it's just in the infinitive like this as to say, sorry, this one. Uh, we use it in the sentence to mean to go, but there are four different ways, and they don't all mean to something. So number one, an infinitive is used after a preposition. So después is a preposition, which means after. So después... And then the preposition, de, of, after, of, tomar, comma. So in this case, um, literally, after, of, or for, to drink. So literally, it means after, for, to drink, but... When you place tomar or an infinitive after the word de, it actually translates to something like using the ing form. So after drinking, we retire to the parlor for hors d'oeuvres or something. So after drinking coffee, después de tomar café, ellos salen para el trabajo. They leave for work. Antes de comer, so before, antes, Instead of after. Antes de comer. What comes before eating? Notice before is the word. But then the rest of this is not a literal translation. Before eating. Right? Um, technically, the eating in English is the present tense continuous. Or actually, it's not present tense. It's just a continuous. It's a participle. It means continuous, whatever. I was eating. I am eating. I will be eating. Past, present, future. It's just continuous of whatever the verb is. They have that in, in Spanish too. You take the verb infinitive, comer. And if it's an... Yeah, anyway. And then you have that participle version, comiendo. So that would be eating. So if we said antes comiendo, before eating would be the literal translation, but that's incorrect. So don't confuse the participle with this use of the infinitive, before eating. Okay, so that's number one, before infinitive. Number two, an infinitive is often combined with certain verbs such as deber, desear, esperar, necesitar, pensar, poder, querer, and saber. And querer is the example that we have here. Well, it was here. Uh, when we said quiero, I want, and then to something. That's the infinitive. So you're, you're using it with these other verbs like to wish for, to want, to need, any of those that express some kind of desire. So, deseo aprender. Deseo. I wish to learn something. Um, notice the difference is that there's no preposition. Right? This one, antes de comer, before of eating, or before for to eat. This one doesn't say de or deseo a aprender, to eat or something. There's no... Um, preposition in between. Okay. All right, number three. An infinitive may be used as a subject and has the equivalent use of the English ing gerund. So nadar es buen ejercicio. Nadar means to swim, but in this case to translate it, it wouldn't we wouldn't say to swim is my glasses are fogging. Is good exercise. To swim is good exercise. You could say it in English and they would know what you mean. But generally, we would have what's called a gerund. Swimming is a good exercise. Let me show you the definition of a gerund. It's in my book. EFG. Let's see if 
is in this one. Gerund. Oddly, there is a widespread prejudice against nouns ending in ing. So a noun that ends in an ing. Um, normally, when we think of a word that ends in ing in English, like um, hitting, okay, we think, tell me, is this a verb or a noun? Should be an easy answer. It's not really a trick question. It could be both. But generally, we think of it as a verb, right? Coming from the verb to hit. And hitting is something that you do continuously. He was hitting him. OK, so it's a verb, right? Uh, however, when you take the ing form and you place it in the function of a subject of a sentence, so in this case, swimming. Swimming is sorry, good exercise. Even though it was a verb originally, it's functioning as a subject because swimming is doing the action of the verb, to be. Swimming is, and then it's a linking verb with a, a predicate adjective. So swimming is, is, swimming is doing the action of to be. And that makes it a subject, and subject has to be nouns. So in this case, swimming is a noun. And that's another use of the infinitive. So Spanish infinitives, tomar, comer, querer, to want, they also function just like these noun verbs, which are called gerunds. Okay? All right. Number four. An infinitive follows certain impersonal expressions, such as es bueno, es necesario, so it is good, it is necessary, es importante, and hay que. So let's look at some of these. Um, es bueno, it is good to sleep. So this is really similar to the other ones that pair it with verbs, like this here. Quiero uh, dormir, I want to sleep. The difference between this number four and number two, combining it with a verb, is that this is a verb and es bueno, adjective. So it still has a verb because it's got to be a sentence, right? But it's using an adjective to equate to the action. So first there's a verb. For number four, there's an adjective. So it is good. It is importante. Uh, one ought to, hay que llegar temprano. So four uses of the infinitive. One, uh, using it with a preposition, and it uses the ing form in English. Number two, uses the to blank form with a verb. So to want to do something. Number three, uses it with, as a gerund, so it makes the verb a subject. So it would be tomar, es bueno, to drink is good, like agua. And number four, it follows uh, after some impersonal expressions that contain adjectives as opposed to just a verb. All right. Any questions? Okay. All right, good. Then let's get started on the homework. It should be online. Go ahead and start on it. Uh, and then we'll look at some of them together too before class is over. All right.